This show is designed to really glorify Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new praise. Sing to the Lord a new song and praise His holy name. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new praise. Sing to the Lord a new song and praise His holy name. Praise His name. You are worthy. Praise His name. You are wonderful. I'm your host, C.C. Baker. Welcome to the Testimonies of Jesus. I have on the set my lovely wife, Beverly Baker. Beverly, how are you doing this morning? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Good to have you here. Uh, we're going to be talking about the topic of restoration, okay? And restoration is a process. When we're talking the word restoration, we're literally saying, uh, again, we say process. This is a stage after stage after stage that we go through. We're going to start in Genesis 37. If you'll get Genesis 37 and go ahead and start reading. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Joseph's life. Uh, Joseph in the Bible uh, you know, went through a restoration process. But I just want us to read that just a minute. Go to Genesis 37 and start at 1. If you go ahead and read that. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brothers, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, the stream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obedience to my sheaf. 
And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Hold on, right there. You know, uh, you were looking at this scenario, the restoration is what I'm talking about today. But Joseph started off as a young man, 17, having a dream. Just being, just having a dream, he was hated. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point I want us to see here is just, you know, you may be, you might have gone through some stuff. Uh, my viewers may be watching this and you've gone through some things. Uh, you had a dream early and it didn't go the way you planned. You had people that hated you because of your dreams. The more you talked about it, the more that they hate it. But without getting in, without reading everything here, because, you know, we can read this, Joseph went through stages, okay? He, he had a dream. His brothers hated him. As we go along in Scripture, we even see to the point they, they sold him into slavery. Uh, they said, you know, let's get rid of the dreamer. We hate him. And, and this, is, this is the process. Sometimes we, we ask God, why do we go through what we go through? Okay, why, why so many bad situations and pit stops? But there's nothing that bypasses God. You know, when we're going through a process, God, everything that we've gone through, he's allowed it. Now, in the end, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of fast forward because I want to give some key points in restoration. Uh, in the end, Joseph had to go through himself. He started off at 17. But he wasn't until 30 years old until he actually got in a position where he could carry that dream. He could actually let that dream come to pass. But in the process, you can imagine your, your brothers hating your guts, selling you as a slave, literally wanting to get rid of you, kill it, wanting to kill you before the dream. And he had to go to a, a process of restoration in his own life where he, he had to learn how to forgive. Okay? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is a part. If you're watching this, forgiveness is a part of restoration. We have to learn how to forgive. And again, from 17 to 30, we change. Yes. And when you're 17, you think different than you think when you're 30. Absolutely. 30 actually is the number of maturity. That's what 30 is. It's, it's a number of maturity. Jesus uh, didn't start his public ministry until he was 30 years old. We know he died at 33 on the cross for us. But... Uh, I want us to see this process. So everywhere Joseph went, he had the favor of God on his life. Okay, and we see restoration here. Uh, but one of the keys I want us to, to just hear today, if you're going through and you, you've been given a dream and you, it seems like your life, where your life is now, is so far from the dream, this is, this is what I want to encourage you to see. You know, you have to go through the process. In other words, that dream is not going to come to pass until you go through the process God has for you. Uh, honey, tell, tell me a time. Tell me some things as we've had dreams and, and things that we've seen, we believe God for, and, and, and before it got to that point, some things you might have gone through and you saw what God had to bring you through restoration. Because that's what we're talking about this morning. Uh, you know, you, you, you got hurt. You got people that said all kind of things against you. And, you know, you, you believe God for the, the end result because we're talking about a dream. But in the process, some things you had to go to just to get to that point. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I think about the fact that when Joseph's father favored him mm -hmm. from the beginning because he was the child that he had in his old age, mm -hmm. um, that was the first thing that caused his brothers to hate him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just his dreams, but it was the simple fact that he was favored. That's good. And then um, lots of time people who are favored by God will have dreams that seem different from ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And you hear different people say favor is not fair. Right. But when we position ourselves and align ourselves with the word and the will of God, we'll receive different types of favor from man because when God favors you then man favors you as well mm -hmm. and so what happens is it happens from childhood you know children don't know that they're being favored over one or the other but sometimes it can happen in family and I remember being the eldest child mm -hmm. um, in my line not just the eldest in my biological line as far as between my siblings but I was the oldest grandchild mm -hmm. on one, one of the sides of my family and then I was, I think, the 
second or third oldest on the other side. But sometimes, um, the way I grew up, when you're the older child, they automatically expect you to be an example. Mm -hmm. They automatically expect you to be a role model. And sometimes they put greater expectations on you to do things than the others. And on my dad's side of the family, my grandmother favored the older child, whether you were a male or female. Mm -hmm. And I remember like at meal times, if it was something that she had, she might have given me an additional piece of meat because I was the oldest. Or she would pour all of our um, juice and she'd give me a little bit more because I was the oldest. And she would always say those things. Um, as I went along, you would go different places, whether in school or in church, and they would say, you're the oldest, you have to look out for your brothers, and you have to be the example. And so sometimes they would favor you or single you out, and it would cause problems for the other cousins or mm -hmm. even siblings. Fortunately for me, my brothers didn't have an issue with that because it was brothers and a sister. But there were other cousins in the line sometimes that would get upset because they felt like I was being favored over them. Okay. So if the, the the key favor creates pressures, it does. okay, and you know what we're talking about today is restoration, and how God will take you from one point to another. All these things that we just discussed about, you know, the eldest and and, and so on. Joseph was the youngest, That's but right. yet he was still favored. Absolutely, and you know, you don't we don't choose position. And that's one thing. We, we don't choose, you know, what God chooses to do. Joseph dreamed a dream. He didn't have any control over dreaming a dream. I mean, that was something God gave him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, people that may be watching this right now need to know that regardless of what's going on, if God's giving you something, it's a process. It's a fight. You know, we not only do we have uh, demonically inspired people mm -hmm. that will hate and and go through changes, but we also have demonic forces that fight against what God is trying to do. The end result is God will bring us through it. If we can, if we can just go through the process, put our trust in God, you know, God will take us through the process. If you're going through a battle right now in your physical body and you need healing, I want to encourage you to get this book, Divine Healing by Andrew Murray. Andrew Murray was a man of God that ministered years ago. Of course, he's, he's been dead for a while. But he was stopped in his ministry for about two years. And, you know, this book is, is over two million books in print. This book right here has really been a blessing. We're, we're offering this uh, as a product for $20 or, or, or more just, just to support the broadcast. I know you can go to the bookstore and buy it cheaper. Uh, that, that, that includes the cost of mailing it out as well, but it helps us with the broadcast. But this book right here, I've, I've sent and given to many, many people, and I've seen God use this material to answer so many questions about healing. So anyway, get the book, jump on the website, uh, www.valiantministries.net, and uh, you know, order a copy. And also, if you we mentioned before, if you want the prayer cloth, uh, you know, just put a line, put a uh, you know, on the email, send the subject line, request a prayer cloth, and we'll get that out to you. Free of charge. Okay. Hi, I'm Beverly Baker, co owner of Automart Sales, proud sponsor of Testimonies of Jesus, and we have a used car lot um, located in Inman, South Carolina. We take all major credit cards that's Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, um, cashier's checks, money orders, and cash, of course. We do not take personal checks. Come and check us out. Holy, you are holy and worthy. worthy. You are worthy. We will not forget. Oh, no. Oh, no.
Go to um, Psalms 23, if you would. Psalms 23, most of us know that psalm about the Lord being our shepherd. Uh, the part I want us to look at or just see in verse 3, Psalms 23, 3, the Bible says the Lord is our, he's our shepherd in verse 1, but then it says he restores our soul. The part I want us to see is restoration. And a key, key thing that we have to learn also no matter where we are, okay, God will restore, okay? No, no matter what we've gone through, just like Joseph, he was thrown in a pit, he was sold as a slave, thrown in a pit, left to be dead, but at the same time, you know, God was restored, okay? It, it may not seem like it, that, that what, where we at, that God's going to bring us to a place, but God is restored. Uh, it, one of the things we've got to get solid on before we close this out today, is that Jesus is the restorer. That's what I want us to see. You know, so if we have, have a key thing that we need to pull away from all of this, that man does not hold our future. That's right. Okay, so even all the stuff you went through, uh, being uh, picked at, being ridiculed, uh, being mocked for favor, you come to a place in your life now where you know that Jesus is the one that restores. And we're in, a, we're in a process of restoration now. So it's not, we're not finished. You know, God is going to complete that. So, you know, in, in Psalms 23.3, 3, we need to really grab a hold of that verse that the Lord restores our soul. Okay, that's a key, key thing. Uh, well, also in James 1.21, before we close this, the Bible talks about, if you turn there, uh, the Bible talks about the engrafted word, the last part of that verse. It said the, the engrafted word is able to save our souls. You may be watching now, and you've gone through all kind of traumatic situations, and you need God to do something. James 1.21, it says, uh, Whereby lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And it says, And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. That's the key point I want us to see there. When our souls, uh, when we've gone through things, our soul has been damaged. And the Word of God is the only thing that can bring us to that point of restoration. It's not, the Bible says in verse 21, it says, the engrafted Word. Yes. Okay, the engrafted Word is the Word that's been planted. It's like taking a plant and breaking a piece off of that plant and, and transplanting that, that piece that you broke off and connecting it somewhere else. He's putting it somewhere else. Sometimes that's what God has to do. He's, he's taking our soul, stuff we've gone through. He's taking the word of God, putting that word in there. And it says that engrafted word is able to save our soul. Another key point in that verse, it says if we receive the word with meekness. Right. Okay. So if we, if we like Joseph, Joseph went through, uh, you know, honey, if you look at, the story, Joseph went through all kinds of stuff. He had every right to be bitter. He had every right to be bitter. But the truth of the matter, he might have went through some bitterness and anger and, and feeling hurt because, you know, his brothers did. But in the end, when you look at the, the Joseph in the end, he was made the second ruler in the entire world at That's that time. Right. Okay, so we may have a dream and we're wondering why are we going through so much stuff? Why, why, why does it seem like the enemy is attacking mentally, physically, uh, financially, relationship-wise? The bigger the dream, the greater the assaults. Okay, and what we got to learn to get to that end result is how to forgive people. If we're going to, if we're going to be restored, because only God holds the, the picture, you know, he holds the future of our dream. You may be watching this right now and you've gone through betrayal, you've gone through injustice, you've gone through all kinds of stuff, but I'm telling you in the end result, if you'll see God as the restorer, if you'll see God as your shepherd who restores your soul, and if you see God that no matter what, 
he said, just like the Joseph, he said, y'all meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. If you can keep your understanding there and trust God through the process, exactly what God started in you is exactly what he'll do to finish. So I want you to, uh, as, we, as we're going off the set today, uh, honey, I want you to stretch your hands and pray for people that are watching that they have a dream and they feel like this dream is never going to happen and they need a restoration process. Okay, pray for, pray for our people as we go on. Yes, I stretch my hands forth out to the audience today. Yes. And I'm believing with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Jesus the Son sitting on the right hand throne of God, yes. and the Father, the triune God, that you will allow, Father, the thing that you began in the people of God yes. to come to fruition. Yes. That if they will hold to their faith, yes. not waver, not doubt, and resist the temptation to give up, yes. that you will cause it to come to pass yes. in Jesus' name. Bring about restoration, complete restoration to the mind, the will, the emotion, and the spirit, as well as the body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I've been your host, Dr. C.C. Baker. We'll see you next time on Testimony in Jesus. So I want to just say to you today and encourage you, if you're sick in your body, You've got to be completely sure in your own heart. Okay, when you're reading the Word of God and you, you see scriptures like, By stripes ye were healed. You see scriptures like Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he healed them. Healed being past tense, H-E-A-L-E-D. He said, and delivered them from their destruction. That has to get in your spirit. It has to be faith, in other words. When you get the word and you have it in your mind and you have the understanding, maybe you've memorized scripture and you know it in your mind. But God has to move that word from my mind, from intellect, into our heart. Okay? So you're watching me right now. Allow God to take the word from, the, from your mind to your heart where you know the word of God like you know your name. Get to a point where you, when you look at the word of God and you read the word, you say, wait a minute. Here's a testimony. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. You have to say, you know what? That's mine. I, I, hold, that, I hold that promise. I receive that promise from God. The Bible says that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp to my feet and a light into my path. A lamp to my feet and a light into my path. Your word directs me, Lord. Your word directs me. When I was lost and didn't know which way to go, when the devil tried to steal my soul. Lord, you stood up and saved me. Your word directs me. Lord, your word directs me. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet. And a line to my path. Your word directs me. Lord, your word directs me. When I was sick and deep in sin, you opened up your arms and welcomed me in. Lord, you said that you never leave me. Your word. Oh, I need you, Jesus.
Jesus. I need you every day. I need you in every way. Hey.